Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNotFair.com and this is going to be my kind of beginner's guide or introduction to uh, to cropping your photographs. But let's get something out of the way uh, straight away. I love cropping. Um, I think it's an essential part of photography. Changing the shape of your photograph, the proportions, uh, the size and the look, I think is it's almost as exciting as taking the photos themselves. Um, and although I'm not a big fan of post-processing, I don't like spending hours in Lightroom or, or Photoshop, um, cropping is, I think, one of the areas I look forward to the most because it's one of the few things that you can do that can transform the look of a photograph from maybe something that was an also-run, maybe not even a keeper, to something where all of a sudden you go, oh, wow, I, I didn't see that when I was taking it, and doesn't it look so good? You can change the emotions of a photograph. Um, now true it's great to get it right in camera and uh, you know if you're a photojournalist you probably shouldn't be doing uh, too much cropping and I know there's lots of photographers out there who say you know just get it right in camera you know you shouldn't do any post but I think for the rest of us exploring how we can crop our photos gives us another chance to make a photo better um, a second bite of the apple if you like it gives us a way of improving our composition or perhaps you know, presenting our photo in a different way. And it also helps us learn to become better photographers for the next time we go out. Because if you find yourself constantly cropping in all the time, you know, maybe next time you go out, you'll get a bit closer, you know, to your subject. If you find you prefer having things, you know, on the top left-hand corner of your photos, maybe next time, um, instead of having to crop it like that, you'll take the photo like that in uh, in, in the first place. And also remember, you know, when people say, oh, you shouldn't really crop, remember that most viewfinders on most cameras only give you about 90% of, of what you find to get anyway. So you could argue that learning cropping really, really is essential. But cropping can be a major minefield and very confusing when you're starting off. Um, but it's really important to, I, I think it's really important anyway, to, to crop right. So in this video, I'm going to try and give you some simple places to start um, and then you can explore your journey I think you know through the world of cropping looking at um, what we'll look at is some different aspect ratios um, how um, how much and where to crop just a little bit really really at the end um, and um, remember that the the crop is the is the final thing that you do before you export the photo because cropping there's two main reasons for cropping there's the artistic reason and or there's the physical reason so the artistic reason is there just to make your photo look a little bit better and the physical reason is because you need to change the size of your photo well the aspect ratio of your photo to fit a particular frame or mat inside a frame um, a gallery wrap um, a digital photo frame uh, in an album um, anything like that, you know. And if you've ever been to a, a frame store, you'll know there's loads and loads of different sort of sizes and aspect ratios of frames you can get. A4, 5x7, 6x4, 8x10, 10x15, all these different sizes. And that's why you have all those different sizes. When you go to, say, Lightroom and go crop, and there's all these <laughs> all these different aspect ratios um, you can use. But that's why, do all your other editing first, and then you leave your crop to last, and you always 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 do it non-destructively that's very very important and if you're working in photoshop or picasa maybe aperture 2 i'm not quite sure but it, it's never working on the on the original photo it's always just a list of instructions really it's only when you export it that it saves a different version of it because you may well think all oh, right i'll leave this photo as a, as um, a three by two aspect ratio like a six by four or something and then a few months later you buy a photo frame that's that's three by two or a four or something like that, you know, 10 by 20. And so you need to change it to fit that particular size. So that's why, especially if you're working in things like Photoshop, when you save your final image, you know, flatten it with all your layers and everything like that, you think, oh, that's very, very nice. Make sure you save an uncropped version. Maybe you'll save the original version with all the layers in. Maybe you'll save something like a TIFF version, you know, which isn't compressed and not just the JPEG, but save an uncropped one so you can always come back to it later to change 
the crop. However, these days, the main way we share our photographs and view them is online. So you could say that the crop is more of an artistic decision. But as I said before, always remember that if you're going to produce a physical print, which is the best way to, to share your photos, you're going to need to match that back to that particular frame or mat or canvas size. And so always, um, or always sort of do it as the last thing and save an uncropped version and try and avoid doing custom crops as well. You know, where you just drag the, the sides in and out to match a particular thing to suit the composition you've got in your head. Because although you can get custom frames and custom mats and custom gallery wraps made, they're going to be a lot more expensive than buying the uh, off the uh, off the peg uh, peg sizes. So if you're mainly showing your photos on the internet, the crop is there to help us enhance our images. So um, let's. Um, get stuck into Lightroom and uh, play around a bit. Okay, so here we are in um, Lightroom 5 with a photo that I've taken of HMS Victory through a window. Um, now, you might not be using Lightroom, you might be using Aperture, you might be using Photoshop, but the idea kind of is the same. You might be using Picasso. Um, the idea is to try and use the crop artistically. We've already talked about how you can, if you've got a particular photo frame, if you click on the crop tool, um, and then click over here where it says original or it might say add shot or something like that. We can choose all these different sizes of frame sizes, 8x10, 5x11s. Um, you can enter A4s and all, on all this sort of stuff. So, so the first crop ratio that you'll see here is 3x2 because that's what my camera takes. And so what will happen is as we try and as we move the crop, the program restrains the proportions that the crop will be at. So it will always keep it at three by two as, as the original. Um, and you can also try it sort of in portrait mode. And what you're really just looking for is something that, oh, that's not very good, is it? Something that will um, kind of suit the, the photo that will make it look a little better. So for example, in this particular case of this little boy looking through this window, you could say that there's a little bit of dead space on, on either side here. Um, and we could lose, you know, lose that. I don't know, just something like, let's move that down. Something like, something like that. Let's have a look, see what that looks like. And you could say that that makes the photo a little bit different. I don't know, I can't like the top of the frame being in it. And this is where you come up against a problem with the 3x2 and the fact that it's a little bit wide and not very high. So what I could now do is I could change it to a 4x3. As you can see, this one's not as wide, the aspect ratio. So what I can do now is I can include the top of the frame like that and still get the sides of the frame in as well, maybe move it over slightly. And the photo kind of, I think that, you know, that might be a little bit, a little bit more pleasing to do it that way. However, three by two and uh, four by three are quite common sizes. DSLRs tend to be three by two um, aspect ratio. Um, whereas the uh, compact cameras can be four by three, but you may want to try one by one, the square crop, the Instagram crop, the medium format crop. Now, the one by one by what, one by one, the square can be quite challenging uh, to shoot for. Um, it can look very, very effective indeed, um, and it's kind of it, it all depends really on the source on the photograph. But you'll know when you do a square and you think, oh wow, that just pops out so there we go one by one and then the final kind of aspect ratio i'd say you should really play around with how we go with is 16 by 9 this is the this is um the same aspect ratio probably as the monitor you're watching this on maybe your phone as well um long and thin um it's kind of panoramic sort of um, but it can look very, very dramatic indeed. And I really like 16 by 9. Normally, only horizontal like this. If you flick it round to to vertical, I think often, you know, it's a little bit too, a little bit tall and skinny. Um, but for 
for drama, especially anything where maybe there's some um, a bit of a boring sky or a bit of a boring foreground, 16 by 9 can really, really help. Now, I think probably something that would help a lot is if you just restrict your choices of crops to those four aspect ratios. So as shot, which will either be which will probably either be um, three by two or four by three, square, your one by one, or sixteen by nine, which is kind of your panoramic almost sort of uh, ratio. And you'll find everything you, you, your editing process will be so much simpler because you won't be worried too much. And I would say as well is we can get too self-absorbed. I think with um, with uh, cropping, you can kind of really get over the minutiae of lining up where it crosses the edge of the frame and does it is it exactly symmetrical. The only people who really look in that sort of detail are photographers normal folks who will be enjoying your photographs won't look at like that so you know get it as close as you want and then move on but if you stick to like three by two four by three 16 by nine and the square crop you'll make that cropping choice if you like so much easier and you'll make your editing um so so much faster so there we go they're the kind of four aspect ratios i'd recommend you sort of play around with it and kind of stick to and the next question really is you know how much should you crop in when it comes to cropping how by and what sort of guidelines you know should you follow so the next question is you know how much should you crop and uh how (laughs) how close and where and and why and this is where it gets really challenging. The easy bit is kind of saying, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try a one by one. I'm going to try a three by two. I'm going to try a four by three. I'm going to try a 16 by nine. And that, you know, that's the easy bit. Where, where do you squeeze it into? Um, where do you move it around the frame? Um, and this is where we can look again at the basic guidelines of composition. It's where we really get another, the bite of the apple um, in terms of, making the photograph excuse me closer to maybe that image that we had in our head when we looked at the scene and we thought oh right yeah cool um i want that you know that person's eyes right in the corner or i want them dead symmetric and stuff like that and so you know the the rule of thirds um really helps us leading lines uh, curves cropping into or slicing into your subject but a lot of this is a question of personal taste and style there're no hard rules about this um, but I think, you know, to develop your own style, it can help. And don't be afraid to look at lots of other people's photos for ideas and guidelines, especially professional photographers work in things like magazines and, and on the Internet and in photo books. And especially when it comes to portraits and people photography, because it can be really, really difficult to know where to start with people photography. And I think an important piece of, piece of advice would be that there is no perfect crop. You know, symmetry isn't always essential. And it's, as I said in the Lightroom bit of the video, it's only really other photographers who will really seriously integrate the minutiae of your, of your crop. You know, get it as close as how you want it. I mean, don't sweat it too much and then just move on to the next photo. Um, look at some photos that maybe you really enjoy and look at the crops on them. You know, are they exact? You know, if there's things like things crossing the edge of the frame, if you've got, say, uh, say it's a photo of, um, I don't know, uh, a, a road leading into the distance moving away, you know, as you come to the bottom, does the, is the, is the edges of the road cropped on equal sides on both sides? You often you find they're not because you're not interested in that. You're interested in the main subject and you don't see, you don't see the other things. However, there are some kind of general guidelines to kind of help out. So, you know, for people, um, don't crop them off at the, at the, at the, right across the joints, like the wrists and the elbows and, and the knees. Um, and if you remember from the, from the Lightroom bit of the video, you could see as I was cropping, Lightroom was putting lines across my photo. And the rule of thirds is really all you do is you, you take your photo. So you say me here and you have two vertical lines there, two horizontal lines there and round about here where those lines would have, would intersect that's where you put your 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 main subject so for example if i was doing a headshot of me now um my eyes you know i'd probably uh, <laughs> it would be to hurley type one if it was a white background like this 
you know, I would be there, or maybe I would I would be down here, or if it was a landscape, I might have the horizon here or here, and then if there was a tree on the landscape, maybe I'd have it here, um, or maybe there was a hill, you know, and then I would have you know, the, the castle on the hill there, or maybe there, or maybe there, or maybe there, or maybe bang in the middle, you know, but not slightly off. It would sort of be, be be around that sort of thing, and you can't kind of really go wrong with the rule of thirds. It really does help um, to 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 get you started to kind of pull things uh, to pull things in um, that way. As to how tight you should go with your crop, like this comes with practice, but it, it's often it's an idea to get rid of dead space, so boring foreground, boring skies, things that don't add to the photograph. But also remember that negative space, empty space, can also be used to give a sense of size, a sense of scale, an emotion, a feeling, if you like. You know, say you've got one person, you know, in a big courtyard and they're all by themselves, but you leave all the space of the courtyard behind them. Well, you kind of feel how they feel, don't they? Or if you just cropped and it was just them, it would just be a person standing there. Space in front and behind of a moving subject is incredibly important. You know, often people say, you know, say you've got a bird flying through a scene sort of left to right. Right, but my left to right, your right to left as you're watching this. So it's going along here. Um, here we go. Here's my bird. It's flying along. They say you should have, have, have the bird here and then have space here on the screen in front to give it space to fly into. However, what happens if you put the bird there? All of a sudden we've got a bit of tension because he hasn't got anywhere to go. But that's, you know, that's a feeling in itself, and especially for things like runners or um, uh, motor races and stuff like that. You know, you have some space somewhere, either front or behind, but play around. Should it be there? Should it be there? Should it be there? Should it be there? See what feeling, what emotion you get from having that um, negative space, if you like, the space that's around your subject, how, 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 it, how it changes. I like to, to remember the fact that I don't want my photographs to end up looking like postcards. So I think, tend to think a tighter crop is better. You know, you can't go wrong by cropping a little bit tighter. Like um, the famous saying, um, Kappa said, you know, if your photos aren't good enough, uh, you're not close enough. Well, how about, you know, if your photos aren't good enough, you know, crop in a little bit closer too. And as I said, um, how you crop will change over time. It becomes a critical part of your style. But don't be afraid to look at other photographers. So, for an example, um, I think it was last year or the year before, I was doing some headshots of uh, Peter Hurley style. I was trying to imitate him of um, Mel. And so he was against a back background. I was trying to get everything right, you know, the typical sort of, sort of Peter Hurley sort of uh, headshot. Not that there's a typical Peter Hurley headshot. You know, they're all great. And then once I'd taken the photos, what I did is I took them into um, Photoshop and then I got, I uh, did a screen grab of one of Peter's uh, photos, layered it on top of it, made it semi-transparent so I could see, and then changed the aspect ratio of my photo and, and moved it around and cropped it and, and changed the size until it was the same as the Hurley one, then cropped it. So it gave me a really good starting point of knowing where, if I want to do headshot photos, this is a good place to start. I'm not saying copy him exactly the way he crops, but it gives you a place to start um, because it will make you recognize maybe some of the mistakes um, you are making. You know, should you crop here with people? Should you crop into the hairline? Should you crop into the neck? Should you come down to here? If it's this sort of shot, should you be cropping there? Should you be cropping there? Should you leave a gap around people? Look at what other photographers are doing. Look in the fashion magazines. What you'll see is that its style changes over time. You look at photos from the 50s and 60s and 70s, they look different ones from the ones from the 80s and 90s. Where people crop um, definitely will change. One of the things you can do is if you do a Google search for Sue Bryce crop, that's S-U-E B-R-Y-C-E crop, uh, the, one of the first links you should see is a link to a brilliant article on our website about um, how to crop women's photographs. I think she takes calls it the one two three four uh, style or one two three four five, and she takes you from you know a, a headshot that's like kind of this to a bigger headshot, all the way to a three quarter headshot, and explains why it works and uh, for her and why you know it could work for you. And there's some great examples underneath as well of um, of those photos. Do a Google image search for someone like, um, <coughs> excuse me, Lee Frost, the Lee Frost landscapes, and you get some great examples of how maybe you could you could crop your your landscapes. Um, you could try searching for 
Gary Winogrand um, to see great examples of cropping in street photography. Um, and of course, if you want to get really tight in street photography, you can't go far wrong by um, checking out um, the uh, the book that I was reviewing not that long ago, Michael Ernst, Michael Ernest Sweet's Human Fragments, where he crops really well into people. Now, a lot of these photographers, they do the cropping in camera, but what we learn, there's nothing wrong with this cropping um, in post, and I don't think there's anything wrong with, with uh, cropping anyway. So, <coughs> there we go. Hopefully, this introduction to, to cropping your photographs has introduced you to the idea of cropping artistically um, to improve the look of your photo, um, physically, you know, to make your photo fit particular frames or... Um, mats or uh, gallery wraps or that, that, that sort of thing and a little bit about how much and how far to crop and where to put your subject within the crop you know following the rule of thirds maybe having lines come across maybe just having direct symmetry um, and really getting across the idea that cropping is part of your style it's something you really will um, like exploring and changing and how just changing the crop of a photo can dramatically change the look and the feel of the photo too um, so there we go that's enough from me my name's rob from robnofoto.com remember you can email me scalespeeder at gmail.com if you like the videos please hit the button if you really like them please subscribe put some comments down below and uh, hopefully i'll see you again soon